Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. The Open Systems Interconnection Model, or OSI model, is very, very important to know, not only for the test, but in the real world. And we're going to be referring to it a lot throughout this training. Now, the OSI model was developed for the purposes of standardization. Before the OSI model, we had a lot of vendors developing proprietary networking protocols for their equipment. And that was fine as long as we we're using all of the equipment from one vendor. But what about if we needed equipment from one vendor to communicate with equipment from another vendor over a network? Well, a lot of times that was a problem. It just didn't work because each vendor had their own proprietary networking protocol. Well, the OSI model helped standardize protocols so that equipment from one vendor could communicate with equipment from another vendor. Also, the OSI model helped to divide network communication into smaller components. A classic example of this is an office. For example, your office probably has an HR department, an accounting department, an IT department, and each of those departments have a specific function. In whatever department you work in, most likely you just focus on that particular function. Well, the OSI model did that with networking and networking protocols so that a protocol only had to handle a specific function. This is much easier than handling network communication end-to-end, -end, just as it's much easier than handling all of the office functions like HR, accounting, and IT. So if you had to perform all the functions of those different departments, it would be very difficult. But performing the function of one department is easier. The OSI model also prevent, prevented changes from one layer from affecting other layers. And let's take our office example again. We may have a policy in IT that we change, but it doesn't necessarily affect the accounting department. So they don't have to worry about it. And vice versa, the accounting department may make a policy change from within their department, but it doesn't affect us in IT. Well, in networking, we can make a change to a protocol, and as long as it adheres to certain standards, it doesn't affect other protocols. So we don't have to go change other protocols that it interacts with. Also, the OSI model really helped with troubleshooting because if we know what layer, and we're going to be talking about layers in a second, if we know what layer a problem occurs at, then we know what protocols to look at first. So let's take a look at this OSI model. The OSI model has seven layers. Layer number seven is the application layer. Layer number six is the presentation layer. Layer five, the session layer. Layer four, the transport layer. Layer three the network layer, layer 2, the data link layer, and layer 1 is the physical layer. And we do refer to layers by these numbers. So it's important to know that layer 2 is the data link layer. Layer 7 is the application layer. We have to memorize the layer numbers and the layer names and their functions. So let's start with layer 7, the application layer. This is going to provide your user interface. And we're going to take a look at what protocols function at each layer in a bit. Layer 6 is our presentation layer. This presents the data and handles the processing, like encryption. Layer 5 is the session layer, and this keeps different application data separate. So if you're working in two different applications that are talking over the network, the session layer makes sure that the application data is separated. Layer 4 is your transport layer. This provides reliable or unreliable delivery and also performs error correction. And when we talk about reliable or unreliable, that can be a bit confusing, but it'll become a lot more clear when we delve into TCP and UDP. Also, layer 4 is responsible for flow control, acknowledgement, and sequencing, and we're going to get into that a lot when we talk about TCP. Layer 3 is your network layer, and this provides logical addressing. In an IP network, a logical address is an IP address. And the reason it's logical is because a physical network adapter can have different IP addresses. It can have multiple IP addresses, so that makes it logical. Layer 2 is our data link layer. This combines packets into bytes and bytes into frames. 
provides access to media using MAC address, and also performs error detection and not correction. The correction actually happens at layer 4. Layer 1 is the physical layer. This moves bits between devices and specifies voltage and wire speed. So this is actually the physical media that you're networking across, like an Ethernet cable.